Hello, and uh, welcome to a video on reviewing what we talked about for the last three or four weeks, which was just chapter eight. We did all of three sections from chapter eight, and we're going to talk about these now. Now, what we were working on in chapter eight was just the basic form of quadratics. So this is a quadratic graph. They look like U's, so they start a uh, basic quadratic graph starts at 0, 0, and goes over 1, up 1, but then it doesn't go over 2, up 2. It goes over 2, up 2 squared to 4. So one helpful thing that's uh, useful in a lot of situations where you're making quadratics is to make a table. So if you're trying to make this graph, um, you can just test some values around 0. And if you square each of these values, negative 2 squared is positive 4, negative 1 squared is positive 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. And you can see this is borne out in our picture here. Uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 4. And so quadratic graphs, this is why there are you, um, when you square something, it always becomes uh, positive, and so we get back to positive values. Now, there's some stuff we can do. If we put a number in front of x squared, if we multiply by like a 10, it's similar to in a line putting a 10 in front of the x. It changes our slope, our steepness. Now, we don't have consistent slope in quadratics. It's getting steeper and steeper as it goes along. It starts out not very steep uh, at this point right here. Not very steep, but then it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. And uh, what's happening with this 10 is that when I go over 1, uh, let's uh, zoom out this way. Cool. If I go over 1 right here, here, I go up 10. So putting a 10 in front of the x squared just affects when I go over 1, how far am I going up? If I built a little more of a table with this, and just test, tested a few other values, um, negative 2 squared is positive 4 times 10 would actually be 40. So when I go over to 2, I should be going up to 40. Negative 1, um, when I square it, it's positive 1 times 10 is 10. 0 squared is 0. Uh, 1 squared is 1 times 10 is 10. And 2 squared uh, is 4 times 10 is 40. So this is this table. We've just made it a lot steeper. It's like our normal one from before, except when we go over 1, we don't go up 1, we go up 10. Uh, and when we go over 2, we go up 40. So if we look at 40 here, we're going over 2 and up 40. All right, if we make the number in front of x squared smaller, all of a sudden, our parabola becomes way wider. So in this case, when I go over 1, I'm actually, whoops, and I just warped my graph away, I'm going up 0.1. So if I make the number in front of point one, or in, in front of x squared smaller, I just make my parabola way wider. You can see it's opening way out. If I change this back to a 10, super steep. If I change it to a 0 0.1, super wide. And so this is the big idea with how to change uh, the steepness of quadratics. Okay, then we moved on to vertex form. And to do a quick review of vertex form, um, vertex form always looks like this. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Now the squared tells us it's a quadratic. So we already know that from the it's a quadratic part. Um, the other pieces you need to know is A is what we were calling like the steepness when I was drawing those graphs. Uh, so I'll just call it the steepness here. It's also called the amplitude, which is why they use A for it. Um, 
h comma k, so this number and this number, actually give us our vertex. And that's why this is called vertex form. And so this looks really abstract when we have all the h's and k's and a's and everything. But here's the way this th will look normally. y equals 4 times x plus 2 squared um, minus 4. And we can pull the vertex and the steepness straight out of this. Our vertex is at, well, because there's a negative in my equation here, it's at the opposite of this. So negative 2 comma negative 4, just taking this number here. That's our vertex. And our steepness, our amplitude, in this case, would just be 4. Now there's one other thing we need to know from vertex form, and this thing's called the axis of symmetry. Or the line of symmetry, it has a few different names. And for the axis of symmetry, what you're looking for is the line that cuts this parabola in half. So I'm going to pop back to Desmos and put in this graph, 4 times x plus 2 squared minus 4. So 4 times x plus 2 squared minus 4. And if you can see, my vertex actually goes through negative 2, negative 4. Um, as I, or wait, was it a plus 4? Oopsie daisy. Did I goof? Nope, it was a negative 4. We're chilling. I, I, I agreed with myself. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> Now, um, looking at this graph, um, if I wanted to cut this in half, which is what an axis of symmetry does, the line that cuts this in half goes right down the middle here. It's the same on the left, and it's the same on the right. And so what the axis of symmetry always is, is just x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex. Boom, axis of symmetry done. So I can do that without even looking at the graph. If I go back to my problem here, all I need to do for my axis of symmetry is say x equals the x-coordinate of my vertex. So you don't even need to know what the graph is like if you know where the vertex is. So let's try another t uh, kind of this uh, question. Doink, 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 erase. And, okay, uh, so what if I tell you um, your A is 3 and um, 2 comma 7 is your vertex? Build me an equation uh, in vertex form. Well, all you have to do here is say y equals 3 times x minus h, but since this is h comma k, it's x minus 2 squared plus k, which is the y value, plus 7. Boom, done, vertex form. So not too bad. All right, the next piece is we talked about standard form. So standard form is a little less friendly uh, for finding the vertex and that sort of thing. So standard form looks like just y equals um, 4x squared plus 6x minus 3. Something like this. Now the nice part about standard form is this number, negative 3, that's our y-intercept. So 0 comma negative 3 is our y-intercept. So that's the useful thing you get out of standard form. But sometimes the problems will ask you, hey in standard form find me the vertex, the axis of symmetry, uh, and, and that sort of stuff. So the stuff we were figuring out from vertex form. So how would you do this? You'd actually pop back into Desmos. So if I put in this graph, 4x squared, let me remember what my function was, plus 6x minus 3. If I want to find the vertex, all I do in Desmos is click on that point, and I can see it's negative 0.75, comma, negative 5.25. That would have been a pain in the bottom to figure out with algebra. But with graphing, it's really easy. So, booyah answer for the vertex found. 
So my vertex would be negative 0.75, negative 5.25. And then if I want to find the axis of symmetry, all I would do is say x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. And done. I have figured out the stuff I wanted to from Desmos. All right, this is a, a quick review of everything that we studied for the last few weeks. We did some review of factoring. If you missed the material we've done so far, um, our first review or our first week back was a review of factoring, and then we moved on to this quadratic stuff. Um, next unit starting Friday. Um, we are going to be doing uh, actual algebra with quadratics, so solving quadratics, and uh, that's going to be uh, a little more involved and doesn't require a lot of antecedent knowledge. So if you understand kind of the gist of this and can do the six problems of homework that I assigned, um, you should be okay to move on to what we're doing this unit. Um, Alternatively, if you struggle a little bit with some of this stuff, I recommend going back and doing some of the homeworks or maybe watching some of the videos that I have created over the past three or four weeks to review this content. Uh, otherwise, um, good luck with this, and we'll be starting with some new stuff, solving quadratic equations, come Friday. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.